Hello everyone and welcome back guys to episode 13 of season 2 of the F1 2020 McLaren driver career mode. Today we're here back ready for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Now obviously if you guys missed out on the last week's video uh, that obviously went live from Silverstone, I would definitely, definitely recommend going back and checking out a big, big turning point in this championship at the moment. You know, a lot of twists and turns have gone on over the course of this season, but maybe, just maybe, there's a little bit of civil war starting to appear inside the McLaren faction in this season. But yeah, like I said, obviously go back and check out that video if you did miss it, obviously, as well. Uh, as obviously, if you are new around here and you go on to enjoy, make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed as well to the channel. I know I keep saying it at the moment, but we're trying to hit 15,000 subscribers. So if you're going to help us get one step closer to that, it would be greatly, greatly appreciated. But yeah, heading though into this weekend's video, there will be spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Championship-wise, we are now, what, 38 points clear at the top of the standings after a really decent run of form in the last few races there. We haven't finished lower than second since the Monaco Grand Prix. We really have been on an absolute tear over the last few races there. So heading into the Hungarian Grand Prix this weekend, we're back-to-back -back winners in a row as well over the last couple of races. So things looking, yeah, incredibly, incredibly good here. Can we carry on, get three in a row this weekend? Or will Lando finally get back on the top step of the podium for the first time since, when would it have been, Canada, where obviously he got two wins in a row. I don't think anyone yet has been able to win three races on the trot so far this season. It really has, yeah, been very, very mixed up early on throughout this championship. Yeah, let's dive in then here to the Hungarian GP weekend. Quickly before we dive into this video though, a massive thank you once again to Codemasters. They have given you guys the opportunity to get Dirt 5 for 50% off currently for either the standard or the one year edition over on PC. If you click on the top link down in the description, you will be sent over to the Codemasters store. And then if you head through there and head over to Green Man Gaming, you will be yeah, given 50% off of Dirt 5 if it's something that you're interested in picking up. I've played this game before. I absolutely love the playground mode on it as well, as you can currently see on your screens. And obviously, if you do click through that link and buy the game, you also help support the channel as well. So yeah, if it's a game you're interested in, make sure you click that top link down in the description below. And yeah, a massive thank you once again to Codemasters, obviously, for giving us the opportunity to give this game to you guys on half price. Thank you all, and let's get on with the video. So here we are then, qualifying day for the Hungarian Grand Prix. And as I mentioned in the Formula 2 race that we did here over the weekend, not the biggest fan of this circuit, I'll be honest with you guys. But it should suit the car's characteristics quite nicely nonetheless here. So maybe, just maybe, we can try and get it back on the front row. Qualifying has been a little bit ropey in the last couple of weeks. There's been one man who's been the king of qualifying so far this season. And that, of course, has been our teammate Lando Norris. Here. So we'll wait and see if we can try and get close to the front row this weekend. They were really going to need a good hooked up lap though in this qualifying session. The AI, very, very decent. I think one lap pace around this Hungarian Grand Prix circuit, coupled with the fact again, yeah, I'm just not very good at really getting the maximum at the car here on one lap pace. Taking a bit of grass through turn three, not quite the line you want to typically be taking there, but as we head up into towards turn four, we'll use all the exit curve there. It's a little bit cheeky, but we do get away with it there as we head now down in through the street circuit style section of this circuit. Just always people say Hung the, the Hungara ring like Monaco without the barriers. The corners come thick and fast through this middle sector there as we're trading top positions with our teammate Lando Norris. No, we're not. It's actually Hamilton who's quickest as we head now down in towards sector three. Could Mercedes be about to spoil the McLaren run of pole positions here? Down in towards the final couple of corners or just nipping the front inside wheel in the drain there. Not what we need as we head through the final turn. Really try and carry as much momentum at the final corner we go. Where is it going to be on the grid? It's P3 for the Hungarian Grand Prix. That was an incredibly close qualifying session in the end there, but we only start on the second row. We're all ready for tomorrow's race, but before we begin, let's have a quick look at those who will be fronting the grid. Hamilton, Norris and Mr. Monaco. Well, that wraps up qualifying, but don't worry. We'll be back tomorrow as we head into the Grand Prix. So just under a tenth of a second then separating the top three in qualifying here for the Hungarian Grand Prix. But it is a, once again a British 1-2-3 
on the grid here as well. But Hamilton stops the McLaren runner pole positions there. 31 thousandths of a second quicker than our teammate Lando Norris there. who was just six hundredths of a second quicker than ourselves as well. Charles Leclerc, a very good job done in P4 ahead of Perez. Uh, Verstappen down in sixth there. Bottas, eight tenths off his teammate there. Not what he needed with both Renaults and Lance Stroll rounding out the top ten there. Albon and Sebastian Vettel will once again outside of the top 10 ready for the Hungarian Grand Prix but yeah interesting qualifying then the the race pace in this McLaren always seems to be pretty strong but if Hamilton can defend at the front maybe just maybe Mercedes can get back on the top step of the podium this weekend let's dive in then here to the Hungarian Grand Prix It's race day in Budapest as we get ready for another round of the Formula One World Championship. We don't expect too many retirements at this track. There are plenty of current and former drivers with flawless finish rates here. In particular, Ralph Schumacher. He made it across the line in all 10 of his Hungarian Grand Prix starts. We're northeast of Budapest for the race today at the 2.7 mile Hungaro Ring Circuit. 14 corners here, 8 to the right and 6 to the left, on a track where downforce is king and passing is notoriously difficult. Anthony Davidson is alongside me as usual for the race today. Let's talk about Mr Monaco. That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Lando Norris lines up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Mr. Monaco, Leclerc, Sergio Perez, and Verstappen, Bottas, Ricardo, Ocon, and Lance Stroll, Albon, Gasly, Sebastian Vettel, and Kvyat, Magnussen, Russell, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Kimi Raikkonen, Latifi, and Roman Grosjean sits at the back of the grid. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. Again, sometimes just sometimes, Jeff doesn't quite, it just doesn't seem to yeah, be quite on the same page as yourself on Formula 1. But here we are then, ready on the grid for the Hungarian Grand Prix, round 13 of the season. And this one, yeah, is going to be very, very difficult. We proved in Formula 2 at the weekend that overtaking is possible around this circuit, but it certainly isn't very easy. An incredibly long race ahead of us. 18 laps around this Hungaro ring as well. Now, the team's saying, obviously, soft to mediums, fairly standard stuff uh, with that. But when is the right time to make the call is going to make things very, very spicy here today. Then we start just behind our teammate and six-time world champion Lewis Hamilton in this alternate universe. There are five red lights on the grid for the Hungarian Grand Prix, and it is not a long hold at all. There is his lights out. And away we go, getting a lot of wheel spin as we head down towards someone, getting absolutely swamped by Charles Leclerc Perez there and Bottas as well as Verstappen, who's going to go for a huge dive up the inside through the first corner there. Three wide on the exit. We've got absolutely nowhere to go. And it has been an awful start there. Third to seventh as we head down the hill there. Bottas just cuts in in front of us as we head down through turn two there. As Verstappen is looking like he might try and make the move on Charles Leclerc work. I'm in a P3 of the Grand Prix. They're all chopping and changing as they try to find some clear track space through turn four and in towards turn five there as Bottas seems to have made the move stick on Sergio Perez here. We've got Daniel Ricciardo trying to look for a move on us as we think, ooh, we certainly think about trying to go for a move on the racing point there. But you can see that has worked out perfectly for Lewis Hamilton and Orlando Norris at the front of the field there. Hamilton still leads the way as we come towards the end of sector two here of lap one. But yeah, we're stuck down in the midfield here. And like I said, the Hungara ring, obviously not a track where overtaking is particularly easy to come by, especially in something like a Formula 1 car, with just how much downforce of course everyone is running this weekend. As we head through the final couple of corners there, getting a little bit squirrely as we try and get the tyres up to temperature. Can we try and get a good run at the final corner here? Obviously, Racing Point generally have a pretty quick package down the straightaways there. We're going to have to use as much ERS as we possibly can. Back down in towards the first corner. We're late on the brakes up the inside of the young Mexican, or not really young anymore, obviously celebrated his 31st birthday yesterday uh, as well there, but yeah, I'm going to P6 once more, 
So we can still make overtakes work, but I think turn one is going to have to be our friend today. Coming towards the end of lap three, start lap four. I can already tell strategy is going to be absolutely critical in this race for Stappen. Not exactly holding everyone up behind him. There certainly is a little train of cars forming just behind him there. As we've got, what, five different cars from five different teams stuck just behind Max Verstappen as we head down through the first couple of corners here. I just need to try and get close to Bottas. We do seem to be able to get really good traction out of the final corner. But, yeah, trying to get around other cars still is not just going to be particularly simple around here. It's not quite Spa or Monza. The next couple of tracks up on the calendar, which I'm very much looking forward to. Or was it sort of my only motivation to get through the Hungarian Grand Prix? You know, we've got two absolutely cracking tracks afterwards. I always think it's crazy the way the AI can hold on that inside curve through the hairpin there. There's no way in hell you'll be able to see a real driver doing that consistently. You never mind if they re sports pedigree or not. But all over the back now of Valtteri Bottas as we head down in towards Sector 3. That's not quite the line we need through there. Turning in way too early on at the entry there to second guess ourselves and yeah running horribly wide through there luckily one of the corners that's actually got some tarmac runoff on this circuit is yeah just through the final couple of corners you really just see everyone trying to take slightly alternate lines try and get a little bit of clean air over the front wing there but again turning in too early through the final corner has cost us a good run down the start finish line here the team now want us to pit in this Grand Prix but the tyres aren't going off too badly at the moment as all Getting right under the gearbox of Bottas through turn one. Yeah, maybe, just maybe, we can try and take these a couple of laps. So I'm going to go for an overcut. We'll see how many cars pit now. Might decide what our strategy choice is. In, in towards the final sector of lap six there. You can see Bottas and I both get a little bit squirrely down in towards the final couple of turns there. Charles Leclerc and Verstappen into the pit lane. But I think Hamilton as well is in. So both McLarens and Bottas stay out. For another lap in this Grand Prix. And this is now where we really need to try and fly in this race. And hopefully you know that those guys all get stuck in a little bit of dirty air here. If we could try and get past Bottas again. Almost going completely into the back of the Mercedes through turn one there. It gives us a nice straight exit out of the corner. But yeah, really just making a couple of small little errors here and there. That aren't allowing us to try and make moves on Valtteri here. Obviously reigning world champion. Looks very, very unlikely like he's going to be able to defend it. Just like we saw the last Finnish world champion by the time you reach the halfway stage of the new season. But still, Bottas is defending at the moment. Bottas and Lando into the pit lane, so we are going to try and go just that extra lap in this Grand Prix. We've got a little bit of ERS. We've still got a fair bit of rich revs as well that we can afford to use in this Grand Prix. There's 11 laps to go here. Looks like on the minimap, Hamilton has defended from Lando Norris. They're going to be very, very close though. As they head through the first couple of corners, as you can just see, we're exploring the limits of the circuit at the moment there. Lando does have to back back down into P4, uh, P5 even, I should say, the Grand Prix at the moment. Obviously, a net P2. But yeah, we're just trying to absolutely nail this in lap. Trying to just dance the car over the curbs, really get the front end rotated through. So we've just now got the warning come up. Obviously, we can afford to use a bit more ERS around the lap because we won't obviously get to use it down the start finish straight. Yeah, really just trying to throw this thing around and pray, you know, those guys stuck in the dirty air of some of the slower cars as well can help us out in the final few corners of this lap. It will be moment of truth time. Remember, do not speed on pit lane entry. Remember where the white line is. Don't also turn in too early and wallop a wall. Into the pit lane we go. Where is the pit marker? There it is. Very, very cautious on the way in, but I don't think you guys can blame me here trying to pull a five-second gap. Around the Hungara ring is much easier said than done. We've got Kvyat into the pits as well as obviously Giovinazzi, who always goes long in these Grand Prix. He's coming through the final corner now as well. And now you can see everyone tearing it out of the final corner. It's a huge train of cars as we head back out of the pit lane here. Where are we going to come out in this Grand Prix? It looks like Verstappen has been sent to the rear of this group. We get on the inside of him, but Verstappen having absolutely none of it. As we head through the first corner there, I thought we were quite clearly alongside, but I know a lot of you guys disagreed with that last time out at Silverstone. But yeah, now we're a couple of seconds back, but that whole group of cars, nose to tail. So we've got two Mercedes, two McLarens, a Ferrari and a Red Bull. Battling out for the race lead here. And we've got a racing point and a Renault of Ricardo and Perez just waiting in the wings as well. You know, those two guys have been standout performers in the midfield so far this World Championship. So if anything goes wrong, 
Those guys, yeah, ready to pick up the pieces here. But Verstappen clearly doesn't want to show us much racing respect, so we might have to absolutely send it on him if we get any sort of half opportunity at the moment. We'll see if we can get a good run out of the final corner. Final couple of turns. Obviously, Red Bull don't have the strongest car down the straights anyway. Let's see if we can just get a little bit closer to the rear wing of Max Verstappen. Out of the final corner we go. ERS use Rich Rev's DRS as well there as we head back down in towards the first corner. We are definitely gaining on the Red Bull. We're going to have to go full send up the inside in towards turn one. They get the car slowed down perfectly on the apex but completely get fish daily on the exit of the corner there. Verstappen's going to come back at us down the hill. We force him defensive in towards turn two there. Can we do the same sort of move as Ricardo did on Hamilton all those years ago? Round the outside. Gives us the inside for turn three. And we are now past Max Verstappen in this Grand Prix. They're a very, very robust move in the end there. But, you know, he was he was willing to put it all on the line defending. So we'll put it all on the line trying to make the overtake work. I'm in a fifth place. Next up then, Valtteri Bottas. I think there's a combination of slowly getting used to the track. And then also just this car being incredibly good. But the second half of Grand Prix, we seem to come on so strong at the moment there as we head through the final corner. The only problem I've got obviously is Bottas. Well, that Mercedes is obviously much, much quicker than Max Verstappen's Red Bull down the straightways. His new fastest lap of the Grand Prix a bit out of nowhere there as we head back down in towards turn one. Another aggressive move, but we do make it work on Valtteri Bottas there. And yeah, Danny Rick, I'm sure, would be very, very proud of the dive bombs we're pulling off at the moment there. Speaking of Ricardo, he actually has got an issue in this Grand Prix. But next up then, Charles Leclerc in his Ferrari. It really hasn't been a particularly great season for Ferrari up to this point. I'm sure they'd love to try and get, I think this would be their second podium on the table. But if we can try and put a stop to that, I certainly will be aiming to. Bottas, I'm sure not happy with that overtake. It was very much sort of dive out of the way kind of moves from ourselves. Forcing the other drivers to make the decision there. But it's working for us. Let's keep going. Well, I don't think Charles Leclerc has got any DRS on our teammate Lando Norris here with just a couple of laps to go. No, he does not. Five to go here from the Hungarian Grand Prix. And this is going to give us a big, big run on Charles Leclerc down in towards turn one. This time round, though, not quite able to get the car on enough alongside, so we have to bail out of that one before we get half spun again, just like we did with Max Verstappen there. So Charles Leclerc... Yeah, despite not having the quickest car down the streets, had enough that time round to defend from us. Whether he's just draining his battery, though, in trying to defend, we'll have to wait and see. We've still got most of our ERS there. Let's take a lot of curb, both on the entry and the exit of turn four. But the podium is still definitely on. Can we get back to where we started? Oh, Charles Leclerc, big lock up there. Oh, you can see he just gets a little bit thrown off as we try to get the front wing on the racing line through the final couple of corners we go. Not often do you see an overtake in towards the final turn of the lap. We're still side by side, but now Charles Leclerc has to back out of that one. And we are over to P3 of the Grand Prix. An unforced error there for Charles Leclerc has given us the podium places back in this race. But Lando, two seconds up the road. Hamilton, another two seconds ahead of him at the moment. So we've got yellow flags out. Hamilton is falling to the wayside in this Hungarian Grand Prix, a race that he has absolutely dominated. Up to this point, they're in heartbreak for Mercedes as they were looking to try and get their first win in God knows how long in this championship. But it has been gifted to McLaren here in this race. Lando Norris, out of nowhere, leads the Hungarian Grand Prix with just four to go. And see what you can do. Another new fastest lap of the Grand Prix with three to go then from the Hungara ring. Things are looking spicy once again. Could it come down to the wire? Once again in these races, we had a bit of a chaotic last couple of laps at Silverstone last time. Eh? It's all proven to be just a bit too hot to handle for Mercedes there as all well. Lando, you can just see in front of us, just kicks out the back end a little bit. That means he's thinking about it. That means he's watching his mirrors just a bit in this race. We need to keep a little bit of rich revs, a little bit of rear S, just in case we can line up a move. But we also need to use enough of it so we can allow ourselves to get into that position. It's a game of chess between myself and our teammate at the moment. And I'm hoping we're going to call checkmate. At the final corner, we've got now DRS on our teammate Lando Norris. We're not going to be close enough this time around to go for anything as we head down in towards turn one. But it is shaping up to potentially be a last lap decider in this Hungarian Grand Prix. We've had so many great last lap battles in this series. But 
Are we going to get another one here today as we head down the hill for the penultimate time? Lando's still in control at the moment, but we are feeling brave, feeling confident. We've got slightly fresher rubber as well. This isn't over. I think this is all going to come down to trying to get a good run out of the final corner of this penultimate lap here. We need to try and get some sort of run on Lando Norris. He's done everything right so far this race. He applied the pressure to Hamilton, but as we head on to the final lap here, can we get a good run on our teammate Lando Norris? We're going to use all the rich revs, all the ERS that we've still got in the car that we're gaining as we head down towards turn one. Can we look for a move? Lando Norris very, very brave on the brakes, and he just gives us the same treatment as he did last week there, but you can just see this time around, it works out for our teammate as we head back down in towards turn two and turn three there. Lando Norris, he lost the race lead last time by just a little bit of contact this time around. It might just have won in this race. As we head up the hill in towards sector two here of the final lap, you can see how much extra grip, extra confidence we've got at the moment on our slightly fresher rubber there. We're really pushing the car to the absolute limits as we head in towards the middle sector for the final time in this Hungarian Grand Prix, diving through the final few turns of this race. Can we try and get any sort of opportunity? Surely there's not really going to be anywhere unless we can force an error out of him like we did Charles Leclerc earlier on in this Grand Prix. Down in towards the final sector though. Is it finally going to be Lando Norris's day as we're pushing him through the final couple of turns here? It is going to be another McLaren 1-2 at the end of this race. But through the final corner... We'll get as close to our teammate's gearbox as we can, but Lando Norris has just about done enough this weekend, and he is going to be victorious here at the Hungaro Ring. Brilliant, brilliant job, mate. That's a fantastic podium. Super driving, really strong pace. Very, very happy. It's a performance to be proud of today from our Hungarian Grand Prix winners. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. Our winning drivers are on their way to the podium right now. It's been a fantastic race for McLaren, that's for sure, and no doubt they'll be celebrating tonight. So let's review the updated driver's standings. After an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? It's got to be Lando Norris, hasn't it? Smooth, confident and assured. I've got no doubt that he and his team are going to be over the moon with his performance today. Charles Leclerc showed exactly how to manage yourself out on the track today. He was almost flawless out there. Incredible stuff. I know that's at odds with the official decision, but I think they deserve some recognition on a day where both of these drivers are at the top of their game. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. McLaren continue to increase their gap at the top. Meanwhile, Ferrari have improved their position. A strong weekend from them as they fight their way towards the top. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time. Be sure to join us again as we continue to bring you the latest excitement in Formula One. Well, there we are then, guys. The end of the Hungarian Grand Prix. And it was once again a race uh, that was short of no drama there. But Lando Norris comes through from second on the grid to win at the Hungarian Grand Prix. They're three tenths of a second separated the McLarens at the end of the day. They're another tight finish between myself and Lando there. Charles Leclerc. Best of the rest at the end of the day there after Hamilton's unfortunate demise left him with some silverware as well going back to Marinello this weekend. Bottas, what on earth is wrong with Valtteri Bottas there? You know, he should have been there to pick up the pieces and at the very least get a podium after his teammate Hamilton uh, had that engine failure early on there. But Max Verstappen in P5 there ahead of Perez, Ocon, Ricardo, Stroll and Sebastian Vettel getting into the points there. So double points finish for Ferrari, Renault racing point and ourselves there. Both Alpha Towers just missing out. Kvyat got official driver of the day there, but I think, yeah, Lando or Charles Leclerc did deserve it as well there. George Russell did a fantastic job up to P13 at the end of the day there as Albon finishes with the Haas of Williams and Alfa Romeos. What on earth is that about from uh, Alexander Albon 
in this Grand Prix. I can only hope he got damage, otherwise that is just inexcusable at the moment there. But Hamilton, pole position, was on for fastest lap. Walks away with nothing at the end of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Surely, surely he's getting very frustrated with Mercedes at the moment there, as that has just been another hammer blow to any sort of championship challenge that Hamilton wanted to stake his claim this season there. Championship-wise, though, the gap back down to 32 points at the top of the table there. And with that DNF, actually means that Bottas now just three points behind his teammate back in the battle for P3 there. Sergio Perez still in fifth. He could still get P3 come the end of this championship there. As the, yeah, you can see Ricardo in sixth there ahead of Max Verstappen. They're three points separating those two guys. Charles Leclerc with that podium as well gets a little bit closer there and pulls away from Esteban Ocon with Vettel still in 10th place there. Pierre Gasly, Albon, Stroll, Kvyat there and you can see Grosjean the last of the point scorers there with just the Alphas, the Williams and K-Mag still yet to score. Russell though does get the move on Raikkonen based on count back with that result here today though. Constructors wise the gap at the top 145 points now is Renault and Racing Point tied as the third best team in Formula 1. Ferrari get the jump on Red... Uh, yeah, sorry. Ferrari do get the jump on Red Bull this weekend as well there in another brilliant battle as yeah. Still really those four teams scrapping it out for P3 overall as well there. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And yeah, we will be back very, very soon ready with round 14 of the season. We head to the best track in Formula 1. It's time for the Belgian Grand Prix. You guys do not want to miss it. A big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.